Okay, so this video is going to discuss about package configurations. Package configurations allow you to configure multiple different packages, but they all point to a single source to configure the connection managers. So an example of this would be, I have down here two different connection managers, an OL OLEDB source and an ADO source and each one of those are hard written into the actual package itself so for example if I double click onto this connection manager you'll see when I just bring it up a bit um, you'll see that I've got the server name at the top and the database um, at the bottom that I want to connect to so I'll just test connection everything's okay and the same again if I just double click on the ADO connection, just wait for it to pop up. Um, you'll see that again I've got the server's local host and the same database. <clears throat> connection managers then allow you to control the destination of this data. So where do we go to do this? Well we'll go into the SSIS menu and you'll see package configurations. And by default, any new integration service package will not have this enabled. So what we do is we just tick the box, obviously, to enable it, and then we choose Add. First screen we get is a wizard, so we'll just click on to Next. And then it says, what is the configuration type? Where do we want to store this configuration information? So at the moment, it's going into an XML file. Um, but you can actually put it into an environmental variable which is actually stored inside the package um, registry entry so you can actually put some of your own registry configuration in um, parent packages and SQL server now what I tend to do is I just stick with XML because that's the easiest way that you can configure um, packages well I'll put it this way if you've deployed all your integration service packages onto a server and one of the things you're going to want to do is say point the um, data sources to a completely different database you don't want to be going into each of the packages, adjusting it and redeploying it. What we're better off doing is have them as files based on the server so we can actually fiddle around with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it a name. And inside here, we'll um, just go to my C drive, wherever it is. Come on. And I've created a folder um, within here called package configs. And I will call this um, C CM for configuration manager and I'll just call it um, data sources and I'll click on save and at which point it, we now can click on to next and now what it does and I'll just make this um, bigger so we can see what we're doing um, it now gives us everything that we can actually um, log on to in the configuration package now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to collapse properties just so we can see overall now because this um, package is pretty much empty all I've done is I've created two variables and two connections and what we want to do is store the connections at the moment so in here we'll just click on the plus of the ADO and then the plus of the properties and this brings up everything which is inside here now tip for you you don't need to bring everything across so what I'm going to do is just untick that and all I'm going to do is tick the connection string that is all you need to actually bring across to connect correctly now I'm going to do exactly the same with the other one so inside here connection string and click on to next once I've done that um, it asks us for a name. So this is the name that Integration Services sees inside the package. So again, I'm just going to call it um, CM Data Sources. And I'll click on Finish. And there we have it. It's now been put on there. So I'll just click on to close. And you'll see it looks no different. However, if we now just jump into um, Windows Explorer, you'll find that inside the package configs section, we'll now have this XML file, which is um, it's hiding the XML because that's just my, my machine, but it is an XML extension. If I just right click on that and I choose um, open with notepad, You should get a file like this. Now, um, it is in XML, but it doesn't actually um, indent it or anything. So let, let's just break this down. So we've got the XML um, tag at the top, which we can ignore, don't touch. Um, and then you've got the DTS configuration. So basically all that does is it tells you um, what the server was, where, where it was created from, etc., etc. So again, we don't need to worry too much about that. It's really from this point onwards where we have the configuration, which is important. And you'll see that the first thing we've got here 
is it says ADO dash Northwind. If I just pop back into um, the integration services, you'll see that I've got ADO Northwind there. Um, so back into Notepad. Um, going through, we'll see that it's a value type of string. Again, you don't need to touch it, but it's really here, the configured value, which is the important bit. As you can see, there's our data source saying local host, and there's the catalog, the database that we want to go to. So if we wanted to change it to say a completely different server, no problem. All we do is we just put in um, an IP address um, or any different catalog on that same database server and save it. Um, so with that one done, um, I'm not too concerned at the moment. Let me just bring this one down as well. You'll see there's the OLEDB Northwind one as well. And again, there we have it. If I just highlight it for you, you've got the catalog and the database. So let me just close this and save the changes. Now, what's probably best is inside here, we can't really see anything at the moment. I'm just going to save this package and I'm going to close it. And then I'm just going to go back into it. The reason being is that sort of refreshes the integration services package. And inside here now, what we should find is if I go into the ADO Northwind and double click on it, you should find now, can you see that the server name has now changed? So the original one that we wrote down on there, which was localhost, has now been replaced with the IP address. Now, the same is true with anything else which you actually put into um, integration services that can be configured. So any of these particular properties that you put onto the workflow or into the data flow can actually be potentially changed with configuration um, packages. So another option I've got here is the variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to expand this and I'm just going to put in the value of hello and the value of 10 for these two variables. I'm going to go into integration services again, um, into the package configurations, and I'm going to create another new one. So in this case, I'll just call this, um, let's just go to the folder first, and we will call it CM variables. And we click on next. And this time, I don't want any properties, but I'm I'm interested in the variables. I'm going to untick the connection managers so nothing is selected whatsoever. And in the variables, again, what we have is we have all these different options. I'm going to just untick, but I'm just going to tick the value option and ditto for variable two. So untick and variable, uh, value I should say. We click on next and I'll call this CM variables and click on finish. Close. All right looks no different now. I'm just going to save the package and again as you can see it says hello and 10 so if I now just jump into um, here just refresh the screen I should have and there we are CM variables so let me just um, open this and again we have the same information again the configuration headings and so forth let's just go down um, let's just expand from here let's just break it out a little bit and we should see there's our configured value of hello and our configured value of 10 so I'm going to put in goodbye now and let's make the value um, 1000 instead and then we're going to save that um, close it and let's go back into integration services and again I'll just save the package just in case I haven't done already I'll close it and I'll go back into the package again and what we should see now is you can see immediately that the value has changed from hello to goodbye and a thousand so that's really what package configurations are all about it's basically a way that if you had always the same data connections going across multiple different packages which in my warehouses I do I point them all to the same file so that means that if I wanted to switch between my development my test boxes and my live boxes all I have to do is go to one area which is the package configurations things you've got to watch out for this is that you've got to try and keep the file structure the same um, because obviously Obviously, I'm doing this on my local computer. I then may want to transfer this across onto a live server. If I do that, I need to make sure that I have copied the package configurations folder where the XML sits across into those other areas. I personally prefer to use the XML file approach because it's the most accessible. You may want to use SQL Server instead. However, that can be a little bit on the tricky side, um, especially if you're trying to configure data sources, because if you don't have access to the database, 
you can't access the config files. So I prefer this because it's down and dirty and nice and simple. So that in a nutshell is what configuration packages are all about and I hope it's helped. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again.